Hey guys, I'm here with Jesse and Adam, who's new here at MPP, is behind the camera. He's now in front of the camera. <laughs> That's him. And we're just going to give you a quick 2025 CALS uh, goals and plans update, um, in case any of you care at all. I don't know. <laughs> Jesse's interested. Yeah. You'd like to know I'm, I'm what I've been doing on my computer for the last <laughs> yeah, yeah. month. <laughs> this guy's just been in his office with the door closed it's and design, like beats blasting. It's design season. <laughs> so the exciting thing is Jim Wolf is working on a new engine. We're super hopeful and excited to get that before Road Atlanta. Um, that for the first year, we're going to try larger sleeves. That's going to give us more bore, which if you're an engine guy, you understand um, is easier to get more power from bore than it is stroke. So hopefully, I don't know, 30 or 40 horsepower uh, maybe is optimistic, but that would be nice. Um, and then to go along with all that, we're redoing a bunch of stuff on the front end of the car, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Um, we have, we have done some things already. Uh, we have a, a new steering wheel. So <clears throat> one of the things here, yeah, here it is. Oh. Magical. More the wire sticking out of it. Where did that come from? Yeah, the wires aren't going to come out like this in the end. <laughs> this is just temporary. But um, why did I do this again? Oh, yes. Last year, we, I didn't have enough rotary knobs to like switch all the things I needed to do while I was driving. And, and when you only have a lap or two in time attack, if you have to put your hand at the keypad, it, you just screw up the whole lap. So now there's... Um, kind of like a mode select in the middle here. And then there's these different rotary encoders on the side. So I can have four full-time dials and always do the same thing. And then I can pick a mode here and do something, you know, 10 different other things with these, with these knobs. And that was, that was too much to be able to do all with analog wires. So we had to make a microcontroller and a PCB. And so all this stuff is, is digital now and, and communicates over CAN. And it'll go through a, a quick connect here with a, an auto sport connector. So the wheel will come off with no wires so is, cool. is the goal. So yeah, this is all kind of done-ish. We just need to get a carbon fiber plate made to seal the front of it. And um, yeah, hopefully it's good. And it uses uh, sim racing paddles that are cheap and feel better than, than the old ones. That's true. Which is cool. Um, what else have we designed up here? Um, I got some stuff for you. Oh. If you want to explain that new front end. Yep. Looks like an elephant's nose. Yeah. I'm not going not gonna ex <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> to explain on, on that topic. <laughs> so this is going to go on the side of the motor, and we... It's kind of complicated. Electric motors overheat really easily, really quickly, when you're putting a ton of power through them, a ton of current through them. And our current motor doesn't have any cooling... Of the rotor so this will just force a ton of air through the, the rotor of the motor and hopefully we're always balancing like a battery which overheats which heats up really slowly but then once it's hot you can't cool it down and then a motor which can heat up in one lap but cool down very quickly so the goal is that it would be nice if we could do three laps in a row at full power and hopefully this will get us from the 1.5 laps we're at now to three um, and it would be nice to be able to go, assuming there's no traffic, to be able to do, to get into a rhythm and really, really nail that. Um, because right now, I think when I'm driving the best, the motor is overheating. and I lo I'm losing 30, 40 horsepower. Yeah. So. We'll look at the data and he's driving better and better, but the car's making less power. So the lap times just stay the same. Mm -hmm. And then he's back in the trailer like, what am I doing wrong? I, I need to find more time. It's like... It's a struggle. Yeah. You know, you got the tires and the brakes. The tire and brake temperatures at odds with the motor and battery temperatures, and it's just so hard to time attack like that. Yeah, because we don't really have enough time to, like, get everything warm. Usually in grid life, the first lap, you're sure you're going to get a clean one. But the tires can't be... You can't get them warm. Like, you can't get them ideal in, in that quickly, so... And then otherwise, um, around the engine, we're making new carbon air boxes. We just wanted to clean out a lot of old stuff that has been, I don't know, like not, we're not super proud of, like the rad exit ducting is really ugly. And so just to do that means we have to also do uh, a new swirl pot. So we're gonna 3D print aluminum, a nice 
crazy looking squirrel pot with a Nismo red cap. I insisted. Yeah, very I'm JDM. so happy about that. It doesn't want to focus, but I'm very happy about the Nismo rad cap. Sure, it'll be B-roll of just a rad cap for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the airbox is, I want to say, are like 10 years old. I think that might be actually exactly true, or like 11. Yeah, they're not looking so good anymore. Yeah, they're all damaged and cut up from different dyno tests we've done and things like that. Yeah. So, so we'll have like a nice carbon rad exit duct that'll kind of be shaped around those airboxes with this cool swirl pot all in the middle and... We need to make a new sway bar as well to clear that new rad exit duct. So all that stuff kind of has to happen at the same time because they all overlap each other. So, um, And then we also are excited to announce that we're now um, VBox Canada. So if you're familiar with Race Logic, um, these HD2 video systems, um, they're super popular with Porsche GD3 Cup and other racing series. Um, so what we're going to do with Cal's this year is we're going to put a Starlink Mini uh, in the trunk. And so we'll have a high bandwidth connection to space. Um, at, at these events, the cell networks don't work. So having a, a SpaceX connection is gonna be really consistent and we'll be able to live stream from the race logic from inside the vehicle, stream a bunch of data from the CAN bus of the MoTeC to the race logic. So we'll have overlays of all this different information um, and stream it live. So hopefully that works and that's interesting and you guys can follow along uh, maybe we'll have it on during testing. Maybe we'll have like a quick off button when things aren't going well. <laughs> and we'll just start throwing things and just turn that off first. Oh, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully everything just works well and we can live stream it all. I just want it so I know what's going on when you're out of view. Because uh, Jesse has a little heart attacks whenever. Yeah, the Grid Life live stream is like, it can be like 30 seconds behind and I'm at the wall and whatever, a minute 30 comes around on the stopwatch and I don't see him. And then I'm just like, Worst case scenario. So I, I just want to know what's going on all the time. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, that's kind of. We're also going to try out another battery module that will add another 30 or 40 horsepower. So if we're lucky, we'll be up 70 ish from last year. Um, we also want to do some aerodynamic updates, and we would love for the Rivian to be able to take us to all these events. So we're planning some upgrades to make the trailer more aerodynamic and. I don't know, maybe put a battery in it or something like this. It would be nice to be able to tow for three hours between charges. So other than what we do on the Z, we also have kind of that project in the background of like a flat bottom trailer, <laughs> diffusers on the back of it and stuff. So it's truly a race trailer. Yeah, that's about all we can manage this year, guys. But yeah, we can try and get it all done. Yeah, he had his huge list with like our estimates and we're like prioritizing hours versus potential lap time improvements so and the other thing is like this year a lot of it's cleanup like all this yeah. front end stuff is not going to be lap time but no we want to open the hood and it, be beautiful we want to so. be proud of it yeah um, you know how it is when you're like building cars and also learning the whole time by the time you get like 10 years in everything you did 10 years ago is no longer a representation of where you are so you know yeah the whole car just keeps getting rebuilt i don't think there's anything now that's from even 2012 these front upper control arms have been there since I got the car. Yes. That's a good. And the chassis itself. Yeah. That's about it. So yeah, we'll give you guys more updates once they come in. But thanks for uh, following along. You spoke about uh, aerodynamic update. Do you want to explain as I go over here to look at my sweet tape job, <laughs> what we're doing with this? It would be nice to create some exits behind the fenders there. So we're going to try and try and create some tunnels that go out through the front of the the fairings in front of the front doors because right now the air flow the air data just shows like, like a, a dead zone there yeah. so maybe we can alleviate that lots to do and make it look cool that's the important part right it's a show car it's a show car all that matters it looks good <laughs>